Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Macmillan Online Teachers Day for primary for pre-primary teachers. Uh, we're delighted that you could join us here this evening. My name is Louise Connolly. I'm the events manager at Macmillan, and today's event, as I said earlier, is aimed at pre-primary teachers. And we hope that with the talks today both by Skylar Headstrom and Yvonne Dalorto that uh, you will find interesting and practical and useful ideas to put to use in your classes as soon as possible. Um, during the talks today, there will be an opportunity for you to share your ideas, to participate. We will be launching polls during the sessions today. We'll also be asking you to participate through the chat box. So please do avail of these functions because I think it's important that we we make this event as participative as possible and that it's a forum for all of us to share our ideas. And now I would like to introduce our first speaker, Skylar Hedstrom. Sky, hi, good evening. Thanks hi. for joining us. It's great to have you here again. Um, Sky has been working with us for many years now. He's a multifaceted, um, very talented uh, person, uh, teacher trainer, teacher, actor, director. He co-runs um, act, uh, action. Acting th impact. Impact theater um, in Madrid. He's taught theater to, I think, over 15,000 children, thousands. probably lost thousands. You've lost count now because <laughs> you've been you've been in Madrid for many years, haven't you? At least 15 years. Mm -hmm. And so um, Sky has given a lot of training for us over the years and for many different training programs. So it's always a pleasure to have him here with us again. And today he's going to give us a talk aimed at pre-primary, which is called Be Unique. So over to you, Sky. Thank you, Louise. And I, I also wanted to say thank you to everyone who is here today, taking the time to listen to my ideas. I hope that they are useful, practical, and that you can start using them uh, immediately. Now, I always think it's better if you participate in the activities because then you're going to remember them better when it comes time to use the ideas in your class. So even though I can't see you, I'm going to hope that you are participating from your houses. Uh, even if you're not getting up and moving around, at least you can be thinking of what you would be doing if we were in the classroom. And if you do feel like standing up and participating, that would be amazing because it'll help you understand how to play the game and it will help you remember it later. I think it'll be easier to, to teach. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. I have a PowerPoint uh, and I'm gonna walk you through what I have prepared. Okay, I'm gonna start with a poll and there are two options and I'm very curious to see which you choose. So the, the question... The question is, which is better for creativity? And yes. you've got two options, structured, either structured activities or free play. Now the um, the 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 poll has appeared in on a, in a screen on 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 your your computer or your mobile, whichever device you're using, and people are answering quite quickly. And it looks like there's a clear majority of people who say that it's better to, um, to that creative play is better. We've got ninety seven percent and 3% say structured. Activities. All right. Well, the question originally was free play, but we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> uh, I actually was hoping you would choose free play and I'm going to throw a monkey, I'm gonna throw a spanner in the works. 
I'm going to say that structured activities are better. And the reason is if students, if pupils are just doing free play, they don't get the most, the best creative experience from free play. Children actually need stimulation and problems to solve. If you're setting them a task during their free play, you are encouraging them to think. Simply just giving them free time uh, will become routine and repetitive. So in today's session, I'm going to argue that just a free play activity is not the best uh, outlet for encouraging pupils to be creative. In fact, it's better if we give them a task. I also think that children have a lot of energy, so let's get them moving. The more activities we can do where they're using their bodies, the better. It's helpful for their kinesthetic learning. Again, as I said earlier, uh, if you move your body, you're more likely to remember these activities. And I also think it works with children. If they do an activity, not only are they using their energy, they're gonna remember it that much better. So the next two activities, I'm going to ask you to please play at home wherever you are. We're gonna play a game called As Big As A, and we're gonna play a game called Busy Bees. So uh, As Big As A, basically, the teacher, in this case, me, I'm going to say a sentence, a simile, and then the children or you at home are going to copy me, okay? So I have a little space in my living room. I'm going to say, as big as a house. And then you would say, as big as a house. And then I just invent, I mean, you can make a list, but whatever comes into your mind each day, it could be different. So you could say, as tiny as a stone, and the children- As tiny as a stone. Perfect, as big as an elephant. As big as an elephant. I knew I was gonna get Louise to do it, perfect. <laughs> yeah, <come on. laughs> okay. You could say, as skinny as a rail. As skinny as a rail. Perfect. And you just can, whatever adjectives, uh, characteristics, anything that comes into your mind, you think of a, a simile to compare it to, you use your body and the children copy you. Um, and it's just listening to English and using their bodies. The next game, Busy Bees, is great for practicing phonics for practicing the initial phonemes of a word. So here's how you play. First, I explain to all the children they are bees and bees go <gasps> Okay, and so I had everyone buzzing. Wait, let me let me finish explaining. So then uh, I'm going to say when I say busy bees, everyone is buzzing in the room. Then when I say stop, I give them a sound, a phoneme. So I'll say, the sound is mmm, mmm, and I might draw in the air an M, but I don't say M because I'm working with the sound, not the letter, okay? So mmm, mmm, and then the children have 10 seconds to form their bodies into an object that begins with the sound mmm. Mm. And they just have tense. And I say 10, 9, 8. And so someone is doing this. Louise, what would this be? Monkey. Perfect. Someone could do this. Uh. I'm trying to be mother. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was looking at. <laughs> okay. And you're like, I'm a oh, baby. what? <laughs> Muppet. <laughs> uh, right. Any <laughs> Muppet. Any object that begins with that sound. And then if you want to make it more complicated, you can say if two people are the same object, then they have to sit down for one round. I don't say eliminated because then they're then they're going to be possibly causing a disruption. But one round they sit down. This way you're getting them to not choose the most obvious one and really think about what answer would 
the other children not choose, okay? So any phonics you're working on, and you say, okay, busy bees, everyone's Okay, stop. The sound is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Perfect, Louise. I can tell that you are a snake. Very yes. good. And you at home, maybe you are a mm, stewardess <laughs> or anything that begins with S. Okay, you could be a sandwich. You could even be adjectives. If a child is sad, then they're sad, okay? And you do the couple rounds. There's no right or wrong answer. Everyone is moving around and hopefully the vocabulary is sticking in their mind better because they're using their full bodies, okay? <clears throat> so that's two games to get them moving and uh, not a lot of English required from them. They're mostly mime activities and you as the teacher are giving them the vocabulary and providing the words they need. <clears throat> so my question for you, a chat question, if you can open the chat box, what do you do currently to encourage movement in your classroom. You can write the name of a game, you can write uh, a general activity, but I would love for us to share ideas mm -hmm. of how we get our pre-primary children to move yes. and learn. Well, we've got one answer from Mel. Um, we've got, uh, well, action songs, songs Great. have been mentioned. TPR activities, uh, Modena says choreogra choreographies, uh, musical statues from Anna, Claire says music, uh, singing and dance, yoga. Uh, we do statue games. Yes, uh, great. Brilliant. Game Simon Says. Yes, good. I was hoping someone would say Simon <laughs> Says. Ah, nice one. Um, basketball board get words, vocabulary games, uh, miming. Um, totally. Yes, uh, lots of Simon says. It's it's it, it's lasted the years, hasn't it? That one. <laughs> it's a classic. It's a classic, and it works every time. Stories, repeat after me. Color yes. games. Good. Excellent. Okay, flashcards. Lots, lots of ideas. Great, Fantastic. good, oh, what's good. What's the time, Mrs. Wolf? You remember that one? Is that where you? It's one o'clock, and they can take yeah, one step. That's yeah. right. I played Love that, it. and I'm talking about many years ago now. <laughs> In America, I'm American. We call that the version is called Mother May I. So you have to oh, say, Mother polite. May I take one step, and then Mother can decide whether you can take a step or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fantastic. So we're thank gonna you, look everyone. at today. Yes, thank you. We're gonna look at these different categories of activities. So creative play, some guessing games. Uh, I think in pre-primary you work a lot with phonics. So I have <clears throat> I have some ideas of activities you can do with different materials for phonics. Talking about encouraging our pupils to be unique. Well, I think you as the teacher can surprise your pupils. And I have a couple suggestions. And then we're gonna work on a couple more ideas of how to get them moving. In addition to the ones you have suggested in the chat box, I have a couple more. So let's look at creative play. Now, <clears throat> what do I mean by creative play? Well, make believe inventing stories, using your imagination. It's great if you tell the classic Little Red Riding Hood or Goldilocks, but I also think in pre-primary, inventing your own stories is equally important. And of course, we wanna get their input. So let your pupils decide where the story goes. Sometimes you can show photos on a PowerPoint to have them, uh, to inspire them, but let them choose. And maybe the story goes in a direction you weren't expecting. It's totally fine. Play games where everyone is a winner. There's no right answer or wrong answer. Just let the story go in the direction it wants to go. And I also think creative play is when you offer your pupils variety 
and choices. So give them options, let them choose. <clears throat> this game, my day so far. Now, a lot of these activities are mime based if you're working with three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and then you can add language. The teacher should be talking the whole time, but maybe you don't expect the children to be fluently speaking English. So I have a lot of mime activities and then you add the language as you can. And as they get older, they'll start um, participating with language as well. My days so far, it is what it is. It's a 30 second mime where a person, you choose one child and they mime what they have done so far. And this is great for practicing daily routines. So the child is miming and at the first time the teacher's saying, oh, you're brushing your teeth or oh, you're eating breakfast. And once you do a couple rounds, then the other children are also guessing and saying the routine that they see. And sometimes they're gonna do an activity you have no idea what they're miming and that's kind of funny too. It's unexpected and maybe they'll learn some new vocabulary. Pets to the vet, I love this game. Children love animals and they love doctor role play stories, something they can invent. They love restaurants and food also, but this game combines animals with the vet, the veterinarian. So <clears throat> Louise, will you be my participant please? Because you're the person oh. I can see. <laughs> yes, um, okay, great. I'm gonna ask, I always ask my class to mime a pet. So you're not the pet Louise, but you're holding the pet. Okay, perfect. So your, your animal's so furry and soft, right? Very. Okay, yeah. uh, and what's her name? Her name is Daisy. Daisy, go, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm putting Louise on the spot. We have not practiced this. Okay, okay. I, I, in my mind, I'm assuming it's a cat, but maybe I'm wrong. So I have to be like, oh, I'm right. Okay, I would say questions like, oh, I like her tail. And Louise is like, yes, perfect. Now I'm the vet. So I have to say, okay, Louise, uh, please, please bring Daisy to see the doctor. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Dump, dump, dump. Mm -hmm. And and what's the problem? Is it her stomach? Is it her? Paw? Yeah. No, it's her paw. Her paw is really sore. All right. I have she the can't best. Walk. <laughs> I have this, the best mm, solution, the, here, here's a bandage. And I, I might get another child like, nurse, 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 Monica, come help me. And it's all mime, put a bandage on Daisy's paw, maybe give her some medicine. And then I always do a joke where I say, thank you so much, Louise, that, that will be 200 euros, <laughs> right? What? And then the reaction of like, hey, it's expensive. So <laughs> I do an example, uh, where I'm the vet. And then once you, the teacher, once you do an example, then you can have a child be the vet for the next one. You can have two vets, you can have different mm, children coming up. That's the game. There's no um, definite script you have to follow. You're just creating the situation and letting them decide where the story goes. I normally do this with your classic pets, animals you would have in your apartment or your house, like cats, dogs, but also turtles, hamsters, gerbils. I see a frog in this picture, a rabbit. But of course, depending on what you're currently studying, if you're studying farm animals, then of course you can use farm animals to go with this activity adapted to what you're studying. This is from Big Wheel One, and they can <clears throat> bring their goat to the vet. Uh, if you're studying jungle animals or your unit is about animals in the sea, well, you can have a maritime vet and they can bring <laughs> a shark or a dolphin. You can adapt this with any, uh, any unit that you're currently working on mime and inventing a story is the basic idea. Another way that we uh, encourage creativity is guessing games. So by guessing games, I mean you are giving clues 
and your pupils are using higher level thinking skills like prediction and deduction and putting things together rather than just mm, there's one answer and one question and that's it. You're, you're giving them different clues and they have to work out what the answer is. You're asking questions which make children think, which means not just yes or no questions. We want to ask open-ended questions. These are questions, as you know, which begin with where, what, who, why, how, etc. Maybe it's more difficult for your children to answer if they answer in Spanish. I think that's okay. You can just repeat the answer back in English. So a very simple activity, describe your favorite toy. Whatever vocabulary they can use, if they don't have the vocabulary, they can do mime, but they can use big, small, soft, mm, uh, uh, wheels, or, or, or I, it's at home, or you know, I play football. Whatever clues they give you, uh, you guess what it is. The category could be describe your favorite animal, story, place, person, using mime or using words. This game is called Mystery Window. I found this on Pinterest and I also made my own, but I have to say my version is a little cutre. I have my mystery <laughs> window here, okay? Uh, this is just to show you an example. You have a, a flashcard. I chose a <laughs> And then uh, you put it in the window. And so it is a guessing game where you slide it and they have to sort of guess. Obviously, I showed you what it was, but you can see how this works in the mystery window. You take another animal, put it in the mystery window. A cow. Perfect. And if you're doing distance learning with your camera on your computer, you can also do the like, whoa, where the, the animal like flies in front of the camera. You, maybe you don't need a window. You're just uh, moving it quickly through the screen. But instead of just showing the flashcard, cow, horse, you're making it more like a guessing game by using this activity called mystery window. Other guessing games we have second mystery box now i don't have a box i have a bag and uh -huh. louise i put an object in the bag i'm going to describe it for oh, you really it's soft it's mm, small and thin it's cotton mm -hmm. i found it in my dresser drawer mm. <laughs> cotton it's, is small and thin it's, it's it's uh it, it it's open on one side. It's yeah. A, it's probably a little smelly, but this one I just washed. Oh, okay. Is it a sock? It's a sock. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank you, you, Lourdes. Lourdes helped me. Thank she goodness. answered in the chat. I know I'm very slow, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pull out some dirty underwear. No. Uh, so you put various objects in a box or in a bag, you describe it. You can also have a child. Obviously, Louise is in her house, I'm in my house. You can also have a child stick their hand in the bag, feel it, describe it for their um, classmates, and they guess what the object is. Another common guessing game, what am I? So you show a picture, in this case, again, I'm using farm animals and they have to describe, you can use I've got, have you got, it has got, um, four legs, fur, a tail, whatever vocabulary, feathers, and they guess what it is. If you don't want to play a mime game, there's always Pictionary where, depending on their level of artistic ability, the children are drawing on the board and the other children are guessing what the animal is. Uh, now, asking the right question, I think, is important. I, I mentioned earlier, um, open-ended questions. So for example, when you're doing, if your topic is daily routines, good questions to ask could be, when do you brush your teeth? Why do you eat breakfast? What is your favorite food for breakfast? Now, I'm not saying that you can never ask yes or no questions. So you could say, can you eat pizza for breakfast? And some kids may say no. And some kids might say yes. And that's totally fine because then you can ask why? 
I have pizza for breakfast sometimes. Who cares? But you're just getting them to think about uh, the daily routines and not just memorize Mm, I do this, I do this. I think it's good to ask them open-ended questions, stimulate higher levels of thinking. Another way to prepare pupils for <clears throat> uh, reading is to predict the ending. This is from Big Wheel 2. This is an audio story. I'm going to read the beginning of the story and then I want you in a minute, in the chat box, I want you to guess how you believe the story finishes. So the story starts with, Mimi and Dylan are in the park with mommy and daddy. Mimi has got her kite. Look at my kite. It's in the air. Where, Dylan asked. Look up there. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. Suddenly, it's very windy. Quick, help me, Dylan. Mimi and Dylan pull and pull, but the kite is strong. Now I realized I kind of gave a spoiler in the photo. So don't <laughs> look at the photo. What do you think will happen next? If you were looking at the photo, you have a secret answer. But in the chat box, how does the story finish? Okay, so we'll just give you a couple of seconds to write how you think the story ends. We have the kite is it's pulling. It's a mystery. Me. The kite is, yes. A ver. Everyone's is like, the, I have no I have idea. No idea. Is the kite, is the, oh, M Mimi is carried away. The kite is broken. Okay. The kite flies away. They end up in a tree. Yes. Nice one. Exactly. That's actually and what happens. They the, never the kite, see it again. The kite pulls them. They're lifted up into the air. They end up in a tree. And then the zoo, the park, mm, I guess a gardener, a gardener uh, in the, the park. Zookeeper. Or yeah, the, yeah. The park <laughs> The I don't care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is a giraffe and he helps a giraffe with a long neck helps them down out of the tree. Ah, but whenever you're clever. whenever you're telling a story, I think it's a really good idea to pause and ask your ask your students, ask your pupils, what do you think will happen next? What's going to happen? Let them predict. It's a great pre-reading skill. <clears throat> Another mm, popular activity with mime is when you have a story. In this example, this is Little Red Riding Hood. There are four different pictures that accompany the story. Then once they've read the story, you have pupil or pupils mime the picture, okay? And you can have this in two teams and you can see which team can guess the picture first. So they've read the story, they've seen the pictures, and then the pupils are recreating scenes from the story just with mime, and the other students are, are guessing what scene, what picture they are representing. Okay, so uh, the next topic I still have, yeah, I have five minutes, phonics. Phonics with different materials. By different materials, I mean not paper and pencil. So again, in the chat box, can you tell me what materials you use in your classes to teach phonics? I have a bunch of ideas I'm going to show you in a minute, but I'm curious to see what you're currently using. Okay, so Belen is saying clay, mm. Susanna songs, flashcards, our bodies, Yes, good. Uh, phonics bag, I think. Yes, bags. Fly swatter. Good. Listenings, chants. Good. Songs, riddles as well. Great. From Christina. Rhymes from Claudia. Okay. Yeah, flashcards are coming up. Ah, tongue twisters. Nice. Like, yes, from Christina. Um, Noelia says, I put the phonics on the board and hit them with fly swatters. <laughs> <laughs> we always we always approve of hitting them. <laughs> okay. Small white small whiteboards as well. Sand, fishing ropes. Yes. Great ideas. 
here we go. I'm going to share my ideas. And the first one is sand. Nice. So this is to stimulate um, just using a different material. It's tactile. It's tapping into a different learning style, I think. Some people are not just visual learners. They like to touch. They like clay. Someone said clay. Getting them in there to really mold and use it, it's, it's um, helping specific students that learn that way. So another example, uh, magnets or you know 3D letters. In this example, they have the consonants are in blue and the vowel is red and they have to build it before they write it. I love this. This is using clothespins <clears throat> and popsicle sticks. So the clothespins have the consonant sound, consonant phonemes, and the popsicle sticks have the vowel sounds. And then you can make different words uh, depending on how you clip and work them together. Same idea with toilet rolls, recyclable materials. Using your old toilet rolls, you can write different words and then you can spin them around to form different words. And they can then see words that rhyme. <clears throat> Back writing, okay? So uh, one child will draw uh, a phoneme or draw the symbol on another child's back and they have to guess what sound they're, they're drawing. Another idea is with plastic cups. And again, you can put them on top of each other. They stack up, you can move them around. Uh, you can use different colors. And then this is a template to make a 3D die, un dado, right? With different letters and you can spin it and use it for games. So whatever letter comes up, then they have to find uh, uh, something in the room that begins with that sound or write a word that has that letter. We use die normally with numbers. So here's one with different phonics on it. <clears throat> the next way of uh, how we can be unique encourage our students to be unique is to surprise them. Now I have another poll and this poll, you can choose more than one answer. So I'm asking you what, which of these do you do in your class? Have you ever come to class wearing a wig, glasses or funny clothes? Have you ever used a puppet or stuffed animal as part of your lesson? Have you ever spoken in a funny voice? And have you ever played a musical instrument? This could be a homemade rubber bands on a, on a stick, okay? So let's launch the poll and you can choose as many as you want. Okay, so we've got the question there and as Sky said, you can choose as many options as you want. So it's, it's really multiple choice. Um, so yeah, we're getting lots of answers. Everybody is replying. I mean, there are answers to all of them. Some people wear, yeah, a wig, glasses, or funny clothes, or probably combined with using a puppet or a stuffed animal, speaking in a funny voice, playing a musical instrument. Great. Yes. Perfect. So just a couple ideas. Great. Yeah. So I have a friend, Crystal, she teaches uh, infantil, and she came into class <clears throat> wearing a wig, and everyone was like, too bad. And she's like, what? This is my hair. This is normal. And they were like, <laughs> could not handle it because they are not used to, to something being out of the ordinary. So I think surprising them is a good way to keep it creative, keep it fun. All right. Uh, the final category, <clears throat> get them moving. So this game, stand up, sit down. You read a story slowly. And every time you hear the sound. If they're sitting, they have to stand up. And if they're standing up, then they have to sit down. So the story before with Mimi and the kite, I would say, oh, wow, there's the kite. And they heard this of theirs and they would stand up. They're standing up. It's beautiful. They heard this of it and they sit down. And you can also sit down. half of the class start standing up and half of the class start sitting down. So they're also alternating during the story. This uh, game, you write on the on paper, I guess papel continuo, big paper on the floor. You mark something for different letter. You mark a space for each different letter. And 
when you choose a child, choose a letter, they have to go and find an object in the room that begins with that consonant and put it in the space. So again, working on phonics, working on sounds, but they're grabbing objects in the room. This is a, you can call it make a monster, make a robot. Each child has a different sound they're making and a different action. And together they make one cohesive robot. So someone could be, someone else could be, someone could be, and it's a repetitive sound. They put it together and you can have the robot or machine go faster or go slower or break, but they're practicing making the sounds and you're adding movement. Four corners. You can play this two ways, with sounds or with places. You can say that corner is that corner is that corner is and that corner is mm. you have a different sound in each corner. The teacher says a word and they have to go to the corner of that sound or each corner is a different place. So you can say that corner is the beach, that corner is the bank, that corner is a boat, and that corner is the bathroom. And when you say the beach, they go to the beach, they go to that corner and they have to mime an activity in that place. Find the, wait, I can't see the, I can't see the top of my screen. Uh, what did I put as the title, Louise? Find it fast. Find in the it classroom. fast. It's, or at home. I have a bar covering. The <laughs> Find it fast. You again a, a category. Find something green. Find something hard. Find something big. Find something soft. Any quality. Any trait. And the pupils run and grab it. And I guess one at a time, run and grab and bring back to to you. And the last thing is to make your classroom creative. I have a couple of pictures of different classroom spaces to give you ideas of how you can decorate your classroom to be unique. So you can have a dressing up box, a couple of costumes, great for storytelling, great for make believe, uh, pre playing pretend. A drawing wall. We often draw mm, looking down. So putting the paper vertically, children can stand up and draw on the wall. Also a play wall. You can play games on the wall. A storytelling corner or some sort of space that has books, that has cushions, that makes it a bit more intimate, a bit more like this is the storytelling space. Rewarding milestones visually. Milestones are important moments, whatever age group you're working with, what would be happening. I thought of look who lost a tooth. And then when it happens, you give that child a bit of protagonism and put their name on the month. A little den, well, again, a kind of a chill out area. And also decorate the ceiling. Sometimes we forget that we, we decorate the walls and the floor. You can also decorate the ceiling. All right, I've gone over a little bit, Louise. So we have a no, couple- No, that's fine. That's fine. That's, that's been great. Thank you so much. So yes, there's time for any comments or questions. If you have any comments or questions and you would like to share them with us, please do so in the chat. Um, that was great. Uh, Sky, really great ideas. Um, people are saying awesome ideas. Thank you. Great ideas. I saw a question, yeah. Louise. I saw a yes. question slip by, and I'm going to give my answer, and I hope uh, it's yes. the wrong answer. Okay. How do you pronunciation with a face mask on in yeah. my classes I I quickly I, I stay far away I take off my mask like this and I'm like Muh, Muh, and then I put the mask back on that's what I've been doing Christina said, this is what I also do. And Claudia yes. says, me too. Good. Yeah, yeah I kind of yeah. It's take a it quick... off, show them, and then put the mask back on again. Yeah, fantastic. Someone uh, said, uh, what do you do if a child is running around the room yeah. during an activity? I might um, take a quick break and do some kind of, everyone, Simon says, movement activity. I don't think I would single out the child. I would try no. to do some activity for the whole class. A little bit of like five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one, some kind of energy game and then have them sit back down again. Yes, yes, exactly. So not focusing on the individual, but rather getting everybody, yeah. Moving. Together, yeah. moving. 
Okay, uh, just checking, see if there's any other questions. Nope. Okay. Um, fantastic. Thank you so much, Scott. Right. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for Thank sharing you. these very great ideas. Um, so hope to see you again soon. Thank okay. you. Bye.